So we've talked now about the good of ibuprofen, the pros of ibuprofen. Let's now come on to the cons of ibuprofen, all of the situations where I would counsel you against the prescription of this drug. And there are a bunch of these, and this does limit its use. Paracetamol, when we compare it to paracetamol, paracetamol is so safe. I prescribe paracetamol to every single patient that I ever see in orthopedics, everyone goes on paracetamol, whereas ibuprofen, it's a much smaller select few who I prescribe ibuprofen to. Indeed, anyone over the age of 60, I would be very cautious about prescribing ibuprofen to, and generally my uh, standpoint, my go-to, is not to prescribe them ibuprofen, to just give them paracetamol and opiates rather than uh, have ibuprofen, because I view generally that the risk of it outweighs the benefit of it. But children, my go-to is to put them on it. And then adults in between, less than 60, it really depends on do they have any comorbidities? Are they on any other medications? And if the answer is no, then usually I will prescribe ibuprofen to them. So let's go through these contraindications and side effects of ibuprofen. So the first contraindication, and this is probably the main one that's relevant to children, this is a reason not to prescribe ibuprofen to a child, is asthma. All non-steroidals are contraindicated in people with asthma and the reason is that the way they work is by stopping the production of certain cytokines. So we talked about how uh, the way a tissue communicates that it currently has a problem with an infection to the rest of the body is by producing cytokines. Now certain of these are called prostaglandins, so I'll write this down for you. So prostaglandins here, these are a bunched of cytokines. There are loads of other cytokines that aren't prostaglandins, but some of them are prostaglandins. And this is the way in which actually it achieves its painkiller effect, its antipyretic effect, and its anti-inflammatory effect, because these prostaglandin cytokines, they are involved, one, in causing pain at that portion of tissue, two, they're involved in going into the blood and then causing body temperature to go up, and three, they're involved in causing the tissue to swell uh, and to become red and inflamed and hot and angry. Um, and the way that they do that is by their effect on blood vessels locally. So they're going to make the blood vessels dilate so that blood flow to the tissue increases. That makes it red. They also make the blood vessels leaky to allow fluid and proteins and white blood cells to come out. And that's what causes the swelling of inflammation. So this is how ibuprofen achieves these effects by stopping the production of prostaglandins uh, at the site of inflammation and therefore reducing all of this. Now, unfortunately, there are a huge number of different prostaglandins that the body is capable of producing, and not all of them are pro-inflammatory cytokines. So some of the prostaglandins are these ones that we've discussed that are produced at sites of inflammation and which result in all of this. However, there are other prostaglandins that have nothing to do with inflammation and are produced in different regions of the body and are involved in normal body physiology. And the problem with ibuprofen and other non steroidals is that they are not specific for the pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. They stop the production of all prostaglandins, so they stop the production of the normal physiology ones and the pro-inflammatory ones. This is how ibuprofen and all other non steroidals cause their side effects by the disruption of these normal prostaglandin signaling systems that are in place in other parts of the body and are useful for normal physiology. So let's go through this now. So one of the places that prostaglandins are really important is in the airways of the lungs. And this becomes an issue when you try to give ibuprofen to people who are asthmatic. So quickly, asthma is a condition where people have chronic inflammation of the airways. So let's say that we have a 10-year-old boy who suffers from asthma. His airways are always a little bit inflamed. And the reason for this is not completely understood. It's felt that it is likely due to an allergy. It's likely due to an allergy to something that is inhaled normally. So potentially pollen or dust or something along those lines. So this child is inhaling these regularly and then unfortunately they're going down to the airways and the airways are responding in a way that they should not to the presence of that allergen 
and they're becoming inflamed because of the presence of that allergen. Now, inflamed airways are not good because the airways have a layer of muscle around them, smooth muscle, and inflammation of the airways irritates this muscle and triggers it to contract, and that constricts the airways down. And the problem is that this can make breathing extremely difficult. And that's what happens to asthmatic people, uh, that they become wheezy because all their airways are now constricted down because of this chronic inflammation that they've got. And this can be life-threatening. You know, if that wheeze, if that bronchoconstriction is bad enough, it will actually lead to respiratory failure. It will lead to the oxygen level going down in the blood. And oxygen level going down in the blood can then stop the heart from working properly because the heart, after all, is a massive muscle that requires oxygen to work. So if the oxygen level goes too low, eventually the heart will stop beating. And again, that's a cardiac arrest. If it doesn't resolve shortly, uh, it will lead to death. So asthma can be extremely dangerous. And of course, there are a huge number of ways of treating it, a huge number of different medicines that all aim to relax that muscle tissue around the airways and open the airways back up to reduce the wheeze. Now, the problem with ibuprofen for people with asthma is that actually prostaglandins, it turns out, in the airways are important for relaxing the muscle and for keeping the airways open. And if you give ibuprofen and cut off those prostaglandins, it actually makes the wheezing worse. It makes the bronchoconstriction worse. Now, that might be counterintuitive to you because you might think, well, asthma is this inflammatory condition of the airway. Surely giving an anti-inflammatory would help because it would reduce the inflammation. And whilst that may be true, the fact that the prostaglandins in the airways have this relaxing effect on the muscle, not a constricting effect on the muscle, a relaxing effect on the muscle, outweighs the, um, the benefit of taking away some of the inflammation that the ibuprofen may bring. Uh, so taking away prostaglandins in the airways is not good for people with asthma. It's going to make their bronchoconstriction worse, their wheeze worse, their asthmatic symptoms worse. Uh, so this is one of the major contraindications to giving ibuprofen and indeed all non-steroidals asthma. Uh, so I prescribe ibuprofen, as I said earlier, regularly to children with broken bones. One of the major things that would stop me is if that child has any sort of history of asthma. And asthma, of course, isn't just a condition that affects children. It's a condition that affects many adults as well. So it often begins in childhood, is usually worse in childhood, and sometimes burns itself out by the time the individual becomes an adult, if they're lucky. But in many individuals that doesn't happen and it persists into adulthood. So you, there are many adults with asthma as well. And indeed some people only develop it once they're an adult, so sometimes it's atypical. And again, uh, not only would it be a contraindication to prescribing ibuprofen in a child, it would also be a contraindication in an adult to prescribing them ibuprofen.